Aloha, this is sailing vessel Golden Rule. And Golden Rule is a historic vessel in 1958, during the height of the Cold War, when the three major nuclear powers, United States, USSR, and Great Britain were exploding atomic and hydrogen bombs in the atmosphere and spreading radiation around. Three, uh, four Quaker pacifists from New York and Connecticut bought this boat and tried to sail it to the Marshall Islands to try to stop the atomic bomb testing. They tried writing letters to the editor and calling their congressman and it wasn't working. So they said, let's sail a little boat into the middle of this testing zone and see if that works. When they got to Honolulu, they were arrested and jailed. And another boat that was in Honolulu, the Phoenix of Hiroshima, decided that they would take the place and go to the Marshall Islands. When they got to the Marshall Islands, they were arrested. So on the surface, it seems like these efforts failed, but they both led to the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty of 1963, which stopped atomic bomb testing in the atmosphere. The boat was sold. Many years later, in 2010, it sank in a gale in Humboldt Bay and they dragged it up on the beach, the side was bashed in, the cabin top was gone, the masts were gone, they were gonna make a beach bonfire and burn it. But somebody said, hey, isn't that that boat that got that whole thing started? And so they decided, can we have a year in the shipyard to fix it up? So Quakers, Veterans for Peace members, local wooden boat enthusiasts, rebuilt it. Five years later, they relaunched it and they sent it up and down the west coast from Canada to Mexico, California, Oregon, Washington, teaching about the dangers of nuclear weapons and what can be done to reduce or eliminate them. In 2019, they thought the 75 year anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki is coming up. We could go to the commemoration with this boat and on the way we could stop at the Marshall Islands where it never made it before. And we could also go to Guam and Okinawa, which are heavily influenced by the impact of military things. Their nuclear weapons have been stored in these places. And there probably would be some of the first places if there were a exchange of nuclear weapons. I'm part Hawaiian and part Chamorro. Chamorros are the indigenous people of Guam. Sometimes you'll hear defense analysts calling Guam America's unsinkable aircraft carrier, but you're not supposed to put civilians aboard your warships. So Guam is the home of the people, not America's aircraft carrier. Other countries do the same kind of thing, so I'm not picking on anybody for that. Um, couldn't go. COVID. All the countries were closed. So we waited in Hawaii and I kept in the boat around the island of Oahu waiting for an opening in the COVID. When it didn't happen, they decided to bring her back to North America and they put together a crew and we sailed her to San Francisco from Honolulu with four of us, 28 days. And then a year later, we took the masts out, put her on a truck to Minneapolis and did, did and are still doing what is called the Great Loop, which is around the Eastern US and Canada. We went down the Mississippi and the Tom Bigby Rivers to Alabama. We went down around Florida with a little side trip to Cuba and back. And other two captains brought it up the East Coast, visiting Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia. And I got on in Long Island Sound. Another Captain Debbie took it up to Maine and back. And now I've brought it up from New York. And we're going to go through the New York State Barge Canal and the Oswego Canal across Lake Ontario to Toronto in Canada, Hamilton, and then through the Welland Canal bypassing Niagara Falls. Buffalo, I'll get off there, but the boat will continue to Chicago and close the loop. We have over 200 stops like this giving presentations. People can come visit the boat. Sometimes, weather permitting, we can take little short boat rides. And it's about an 11,000 mile circuit. So it was only 3,000 miles from Hawaii to California, so it's a, a little more um, complicated route here in North America. Um, I've really been pleased and 
impressed by the kindness and generosity of many different kinds of people all along the rivers and shorelines and here as well and the natural beauty and the human works beauty and I'd like to thank the Hudson River Maritime Museum for giving us dock space and inviting us to make a presentation in their boat barn tonight. Aloha. Thank you.